Hi, my name's Carrie Court from Sussex Green Living and this is Pedro. We work with lots of schools, beavers, brownies, scouts and guides, climate champions like you. In this short video today, we're going to show you how you can become a climate champion through the use of art and storytelling. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm going to be helping Carrie today. I'm going to be reading you a story that I've written. Today we're going to be using stories and art to build the future we all want to see and live in. After Catherine's read her story, we want you to write or draw how you think the story ends. We'd love to receive copies of your work, so please take a good photo or scan your art or your writing and email it to me at court at sussexgreenliving.co.uk. We're really looking forward to seeing your creative ideas. We're going to produce a Climate Champion digital storybook to show people the future that you want. Plus, we're really excited to tell you that your art can be entered into a competition that we're running with the South Downs National Park. The competition has individual and group categories for different age groups, ranging from five to 16 years old. The competition isn't for writing, but you could enter your art in the poster category and go away and make an eco sculpture made out of unwanted materials. Some of you call it junk modelling. You can do it on your own or in a group of children of the same age as you, in a mixed age group like the eco council at school, or there's a family category so your parents and guardians can get involved too. There are 16 prizes of £150 to be won. When you've heard the story, you might choose to write the end or to do a picture or an illustration to show how you think the story ends. These images show the way we were street and Bright New Future Street. It's the same street. The way we were is showing perhaps just a few months ago Busy street, nowhere to play, no growing going on in the street, an unsafe place for, for pets and, and children and adults alike. Whereas the bright new future street shows some of the things that actually have changed over the last few months and things that could change to improve the community, more growing, more space for wildlife, a safer place for children, adults and pets. I know many of you are absolutely brilliant eco-artists and great at finding recycling and unwanted materials to make beautiful art as seen here in these pictures. So you might go away and be inspired after this story to make a model which could be entered in the South Downs National Park competition. Here are a few other examples to inspire you. Our world feels very different in these strange and difficult times, doesn't it? It's all very odd. Although there are sad things going on, there are changes 
which are really helping the planet. There's lots of signs that the natural world is recovering whilst we're slowing down, stopping all our racing around and buying. Catherine's now going to read you the lovely story that she's written. Listen very carefully, climate champions, and help us build a better, fairer, greener and happier world. We grew up on an island. It was a big island, but as we grew, it seemed to shrink. It was fully equipped, but as we grew, we wanted more. It was beautiful, but as we grew, we stopped noticing. When we were small, we ran along the beaches and wondered at the way the tides rearranged the coastline and the way that the rocks and the sands were licked clean by the sea. When we were small, we played among the trees and we stood beneath their branches to meet our friends and to have our arguments and to fall in love. We loved to hear the patter of rain when it spat down and the trees reached out to catch it. Sometimes we scaled their branches and stared at the sky. We imagined what it might be like to fly across it with the birds. When we were small, we watched the way the animals wove nests and burrowed warrens and built dams how they dug out treasures from the earth and ate the things they were able to catch. We admired how beautiful their coats and feathers were. We wished we might be as magical as our island. When we grew, we dug our own treasures from the ground. We dug until the treasures stopped being treasures and became demands. But what if we left the treasures where they belonged? We learned how to catch everything the animals used to catch and ate them even when we weren't hungry. We took their coats and we made our own too, again and again and again and again. But what if we only took what we needed for food and clothes? What if we didn't keep buying them new? When we grew, we cut down those trees and shifted the ground beneath them to build our own things. We used them to build things that could keep out the rain and shut out the sky. Places to meet friends and have arguments and fall in love. What if we started planting trees again? And what if we spent more time outdoors? We never stopped wanting to fly across the sky, so we made sure that we copied the birds too. We built machines that could reach the places above the clouds. From there, we saw that there were other islands with other treasures and other animals, and we wondered if we could have them too. What if we left the sky to the birds who belonged there? What if we didn't buy things from far away? When we grew, we wanted to be greater than both the beaches and the tides. So we left things there that couldn't be licked clean, and we competed to rearrange the coastline ourselves. What if we left less of our rubbish behind us? We outgrew our island. We left the earth empty and the forests bare and the beaches hidden beneath a layer of dirt. We wanted the magic and we stole it without understanding what we were taking. The magic was how the island stayed alive and we removed most of it. Now we wonder, how might we put it back? In our story, the island, which represents our planet, has been misused and badly treated. But there are lots of things that could be changed to help restore it. Maybe you have already had to make some changes recently due to lockdown. What impact do you think these might have had on our world? Your challenge now is to finish the story. How do you think we could help the earth to heal? Maybe you want to explore one of the possibilities in our story, like leaving the sky to the birds or leaving less of our rubbish behind us. Or maybe you have better ideas of your own. You can either write what happens next or you can draw it, paint it, design it, build it. If you're watching with family, you can discuss it as a planet saving team the idea is to let your imagination run wild, designing the future that you want to inherit. We're really excited to see what you create.
please visit www.sussexgreenliving.co.uk where you can download everything that you need for the competition plus our home working guide with lots of ideas for how to build a better world, a happier planet where we can live in harmony and cause less damage to our natural world. There are loads of ideas for eco art materials. Many call it rubbish. We call it a waste resource or an art resource. So off you go. Write or draw the end of the story. You or your parents could share the message with these social media tags. You could share the future you want and the bright new future with your council or in public spaces. Enter the competition or just email us your art to be included in the Digital Climate Champions book. On the homepage, click on the South Downs National Park poster and it will take you through to the page where there's the guide, the entry form and the information about the competition. The competition's been kindly sponsored by the Baltini Trust. Good luck, climate champions. Go and finish that story. Here's an example to give you some inspiration.
thank you for joining us today. We really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found some creative inspiration for a bright new future.